In this video, we are going to be discussing drawing an eye naturalistically. Now, I like using the term naturalism as opposed to using the term realism. Naturalism, I'm just trying to represent what I see before me in a believable way. Uh, and that might be confusing because, I, you know, you think of realism, you think of you, you just draw what you see. Well, you just copy what you see, actually. And um, you're more, to me, the term, to me anyway, the term is more concerned with surface details. And I'm not trying to relay something that might be viewed as photorealism or just, you know, make it look so like a photograph, right? I'm more concerned with the overall impact of how things look. For that reason, see, you look at the drawing on the left, which is going to be the second drawing of an eye, which I'm going to demonstrate in this video. But right here, I show you the finished drawing. You look at it on the left and you can look at the eyelashes and you can see that I did not draw every single eyelash. I just settled for a shape of the eyelash. And the reason being is that when we look at a person, we look at the overall face. We don't focus on any one particular area, so we don't notice the individual strands of eyelash unless we focus on that. If we focus on a particular part of the face, then all the other parts of the face become harder to focus on. We're not focusing on everything, whereas in uh, when you're concerned about something like photorealism, everything is detailed, and that's not really how we see. Naturalism, to me, deals more with the way that we see. For instance, if you're looking at a person that you know very, very well, could be a relative, a sibling, or a parent, or someone, and you look at them from a distance, you can still see who they are. You can still recognize them, even though you're not looking at, say, the individual eyelash, the color of their eyes, uh, whatever other details, freckles, whatever other details that you might pick up when looking at someone from really close up and you're focusing on different things, you, you, you tend to pick things, these things up after a while, but initially you're looking at the whole, the whole image that's in front of you, the whole what object. And you're not focused on any one thing. You're just accepting everything as is. And then you might focus on individual details or might notice indiv individual details as you go along. But that's not the overall impact. And then again, when you focus on those details, it is at the exclusion of whatever other details that you might have noticed, right? Now, if you look on the right, you see all these kind of cartoon not kind of cartoons, they're car cartoon versions of eyes. And these are the eyes that we see when we're children, right? When we're children, I, I mean, for me, I grew up, the first drawings or illustrations that I was familiar with were the drawings and illustrations that you found in comic books or children's books. You know, you look at illustrations like Dr. Seuss, where you might see eyes similar to these, right? And if you look at the upper right, upper right, you can see a very, very simple, just an almond shape with uh, uh, strokes for eyelashes and a dot in the center of it representing the iris. And there you have a very, very simple symbol that represents the eye. As children, we begin to draw by the use of symbols. It's a shorthand for visually explaining what you understand about your observable world, okay? We draw symbols for things like trees where we, you know, we have that brown trunk or uh, cylinder and then we put something on top of it which is kind of fluffy. It can either be, it can either be foliage or it can be clouds depending on the color, right? If it's white, it's clouds. It's if it's if you colored green, it's foliage. Uh, we draw the sun. We do a circle. When we do lines all around it, representing the rays of the sun, and then we color it yellow. We do a house, a, a 
triangle on top of a box and these are symbols for you know these are the way we make sense out of the world we draw symbols to represent people and we you see here the type the type of more sophisticated symbols that you might find in uh animation or you know manga or something like that and this is not if i didn't mention it before this is not a oh drawing this way is better than that way type of video not at all this is just that you know when you are used to seeing or understanding things a certain way like this is how you draw an eye then when you're faced with it you finally go you, you want to pursue art and you finally go to an art class where there's a model posing in front of you and you're drawing things that's not what an eye looks like that's not what the eye looks like but we turn to these symbols in an effort to explain what it is that we're seeing instead of observing or experiencing what we're you know what what we are viewing right we, we you know we experience it by relating it in our drawing pads and so forth and, and that's how we explain it like you know like a, a a writer explains his story or explains a, a particular detail in the story relating to something that the writer has seen whatever we do that with the use of our pencil and drawing the thing that we're trying to explain not using words right we use uh, we, we draw it. We basically, we draw it. Now, eyes are a good place to start talking about how to replace the use of symbols with a more natural looking depiction of whatever it is that we're trying to see. And that's what I'm going to go over in these, in these demonstrations in this video. The first thing I try to do when drawing the eye is to identify the bony structure of the eye socket and place the ball of the eye in that space. So I'm trying here to look for whatever visual cues that I can to place the eye socket and to find its shape. Now, before I, uh, the video I posted before this one was a video on drawing the skull and it, it is so useful to understand the structure of the skull because it helps with things like this, right? Where it helps with the why things are shaped the way they are because the skull is always particular to that person. Everybody's skull is different. You know, they're, they're, they're like all these, it's, it's one, it's the same thing for everyone, but there are very, very subtle differences that make up that individual. So for this person, I'm trying to look at the surface and see beyond the surface to see where the the structure of that eye socket is and then to place the ball to place the ball of the eye within that now the ball is of course the main actor here right that's what we're trying to draw is the eye so i'm trying to again identify that socket and place the ball of the eye within this space and then i'm going to look at how the skin wraps around that ball from the upper upper and the lower eyelids. I'm not looking necessarily for lines, but I'm looking for what those lines are describing. Like the line for the upper lid is not just a line, but it's describing how that upper lid uh, uh, folds in when it's when it's it's rolled back. It folds within itself, and uh, according to the, the the ball. So I'm trying to be as descriptive as possible of what I see, not just give lines that that kind of indicate what should be there or, or you know, fall into the pattern of making symbols, is why are those lines there? What are those lines describing? So that line above the eye, above the lashes that you see is describing that fold of the lid that's going back, that's rolling back. Like uh, there used to be these uh, um, these desks, these old antique desks, and what they did was they they had a, like a um, a a door that kind of rolled over the desk, and when you want to use the desk, you lifted up that door and it rolled back into the desk. You know, I don't know what to call it, but it rolls back, and it's kind of like what this is, right? So knowing what uh, it is underneath helps us to understand 
why things look the way they do on the surface and knowing the skull and I'm going to leave a link to that video uh, because it's important to know like the, 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 the shape of the skull and that what goes over it it's like everything that goes over it the skull shapes the face the skull shapes like your nose it shapes your eyes it shapes your 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 mouth you know it shapes your cheekbones and so forth it's what gives the face its shape so knowing what's underneath helps you you know the eye socket helps to provide a stage for the main actor which is of course the eyeball now I you know in the beginning I have to look for those markers and approximate what I see and that's all a drawing is a drawing is a series of corrections right because first lines you put down are your best guesses at what you see and the rest of the lines that you put down are the refinement the corrections the changing the things to make it look correct or look right look according to what it is that you observe so you start off that way you kind of throw a, a little weight off of yourself because you don't have to be right from the outset and it's okay to change whatever you need to change to make your drawing correct now I'm speeding up this video because this is all about that finding stage where I'm trying to find everything and make the shape as correct as possible before I start using the darker graphite so I'm here using like my eraser, my hard graphite and so forth just to make sure that I do the drawing as correct as possible. And then after that, I have enough confidence to go back in with a darker graphite like what you see here and basically make a just finalize the drawing, make definite decisions about what it is that I see not that there are not going to be any corrections beyond this point if you have watched my videos you would have known that I have said that time and again that the drawing is never finished till you put your pencil down because it's all about making those corrections right so I'm going I'm just right now is a stage where I just feel more confident about my drawing and that I can go ahead and use a darker graphite because I'm going to I'm not I'm not going to stop erasing but I'm going to erase a lot less and um, and just uh, um, basically work with what I have down here and you know making refinements making corrections but hopefully if I got the foundation right which was those uh, first few moments of making my guesses and so forth then um, I can proceed from here but the eye basically like I said I'm emphasizing the roundness of the eye I'm not concerned so much about the line but about the shape and what does that shape describe the roundness of the eye and the um, and then you know obviously I'm getting into the light and dark because that helps describe things more now I try to avoid doing the eyelashes but you know obviously the eyelashes mean something here so I'm going to make some indication of it but try to limit it as much as possible because I don't want to call too much attention to eyelashes see how in the eye you get both the feeling of the recess of the eye socket as well as the feeling of the eye bulging forward especially you see it in the lower lid where you see the roundness not just from left to right but you know just uh, like from like beneath it so did you see how round that shape is and how that that lower lid is wrapping around the lower part of the eye and that's helping to form that 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 roundness so you see it recedes and at the same time it's pushing forward so I'm trying to get that all to give the feeling of the roundness of that eye and you know here I'm indicating some of that eyelash like I said not crazy about the idea and I, I guess uh, um, in 
the long run I wasn't crazy about the way it made the drawing look either but add just uh, you know you you uh, um, like I said you make your best guesses I could always erase that and that's not a big concern to me but the biggest concern really is the getting the feeling of that roundness getting the feeling of there's more of that upper lid underneath that line so that line isn't just something that's there it's just it helps to give description to the roundness of the eye as well as the lower lid helping to give the description of the roundness of the eye as well at this point the eye is actually done at this point all it is is refinement making things darker maybe lightening things uh, making as, as few corrections as needed at this point so it's really basically the drawing is basically done it's all about refinement from here now it's not the perfect drawing but it is a drawing that gives a description of the eye um, in in and not a symbol of the eye it's something that um, that approaches more towards the natural look of the eye rather than something that might be something highly stylized it's not stylized it's not uh, anything like that but it is a representation of what it is that I see and that's what I'm putting down now it could be a better drawing it's not the greatest of drawings but it it it, it serves the purpose for this demonstration as far as that is concerned so beyond this when I go into the next drawing which is a drawing and of the eye in profile it's going to be the same things it's going to be something very very you know it's going to be something similar because we're going about like the most important thing is understanding the placement of the socket which you still see here in this drawing even as as developed as it is you still get an, a, a, a feel for the socket you know as you should because if you see it in the reference then you should be able to see it in your drawing so you get a feel for the socket and you get a feel for the uh the, 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 the eyeball so over here is going to be the same thing the same approach applies but you 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 know you envision the skull in profile this time so you got to indicate the socket as it looks from the side which is what I'm doing here so in this reference the lower lid gives the biggest hint of the uh, of the roundness of the form as it wraps around the eyes if you look at the lower lid the, it, it, you can see it turning into the nose so there's a space between the eye and the nose that it turns into and there's a slight indication of that and in this drawing I'm going to try and emphasize that because that gives me more of a feeling of what I'm looking for so there are two things that I'm trying to accomplish First is in this diagram here where you see the finished drawing and on the right and on the left you see my drawing basically of the skull or an indication of the skull, an indication of the socket and how everything looks in profile, right? Everything from the side and how that ball fits right in there and trying to indicate, I don't know if you can see it clearly too, but how the, the lids wrap around and and kind of uh, show the roundness of that ball so that it doesn't all appear as a flat shape as we see here on the left what you see is a drawing which doesn't look so bad but it looks flat it gives an indication of the roundness of the eye going up and down but not as it's turning towards the nose just barely but it's very very stylized more closely related to the symbols that I showed you in the beginning of this video now on the right you have a drawing that's not finished but already it's giving you more of the roundness of that eye both up and down and left to right right so you can see how the eye bulges out of the eye socket and it gives you more of an indication of the the, the volume of the eye than the drawing on the left now the drawing on the left is not bad 
but it doesn't give you as much information and it doesn't appear as natural as the drawing on the right. The drawing on the right would be more in keeping with what we see in the natural world. Now going back to the video, keeping those things in mind in regards to making sure that I don't flatten out the image and also knowing that I'm doing this from the side, right? So I'm doing a profile view and I'm keeping in mind of how the skull looks from the side. Looking at the indicate as I did from the drawing before, looking at the surface indications to give me some clue as to where this eye socket is. Also, what's helpful, I, I have, as I mentioned before, this little model skeleton that sometimes I, I, I take it out from time to time and I look at it and and I see what just uh, um, what I'm trying to see underneath the surface details here. Like I look, I can look at this replica of the skull and kind of see where I'm going at with trying to indicate where the eye socket is. So it helps me to find it, helps me to visualize what's going on underneath. And you know, it's, it's just a general plastic model. So it, it, it's useful, it's helpful. And it, it, uh, um, it, like, as I said, it gives me indication. So I'm trying to do those two things, but in the end, it's, it's the same approach as the drawing from before in that I identify the eye socket, I place the ball within there, and I, you know, I, I understand that the lids, the lines that I see are basically indications of the, the, the shape that it's trying to describe. And I'm using those lines to, to lead me to those shapes. And again, not concerned so much for, um, for too much detail is as much as giving up, giving the overall effect of what the eye looks like. Being that the drawing is going to go on as the first one did, that is, it's being a series of uh, best guesses and then refinements and corrections and so forth until I come to my final image, I'm just going to go ahead and speed up this part of the video and just to, just enough to indicate what's going on and so forth. So that's pretty much the drawing of the eye. Now I'm going to go over, let me see, I did the nose, I did the skull, I did the eyes, and then there's going to be the ears and the lips and so forth and probably the hair. Um, and then I'm going to, I'm not going to put these videos like back to back. I'm going to put some videos in between. Uh, and, and space it out a bit, but uh, I figure like these instructional videos would be useful because as long as we're drawing portraits, drawing the face, we're going to need to know how these features are, are done, at least uh, to, uh, um, to give enough time to study them individually, even though I, I believe that it always works best when you're drawing everything together because these these uh, these features have to relate to the other features and to the overall whole face. And it makes it easier, especially easier, to edit things, to pick and choose what you're going to emphasize, that is give detail to, and what you're not going to. So it, sometimes it can look a little odd when you're just doing the eye or the ear or the nose and you're not really, um, you know, you're, you're not really detailing it too much or, or, or you know showing like like uh, um, like I mentioned before like I'm not into drawing every eyelash um, but giving an indication of a bunch of eyelashes there just to giving the general shape because again it's all about the overall effect of it right it's a it's just a small part of the whole it's important and it definitely would be missed if it wasn't there. I'm talking about the eye, but it's also it's it's uh, the nose, the ears, everything else is just as important. The lips, and in in, uh, um, in in drawing the face. So again, I want to thank you for following this video this long, and and I hope that 
this has been a, a, a learning experience, you know, something that you can walk away with that made it worthwhile, as well as uh, if you liked it, if it was a learning experience, please go ahead and hit like button. It just helps me, helps my channel. And I know you hear that that spew from everybody who's on uh, on uh, YouTube, but it's true. It helps the channel and it helps it to grow and it helps it to um, to become more relevant and it helps more people to find it. So uh, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Uh, there's going to be more videos. I'd like to say every time that I'm here, there's going to be a video every Tuesday posted at 12 a.m. New York time. That's where I'm at, New York. So I posted 12 a.m. and um, where we just, uh, you know, have fun learning how to draw and uh, looking at, at, at things that will hopefully challenge us and help us to become better artists. I mean, me too. I mean, part of this experience is that uh, when I'm teaching, I'm also learning and it's also a good experience for me. And if anyone has any suggestions as to things that you would like to see on this channel, things that you would want to see me teach or talk about, then uh, please leave comments below. I, I am open to whatever suggestions as long as they fall in line. I can't promise that I will do every suggestion, but I can't promise if it falls in line with the things that we're doing on this channel, I can definitely add to uh, the, thing, the, the videos that I'm doing here. So I'm always open to that. So again, I'm here every Tuesday. So next Tuesday, I'll be here with another video. Until then, if uh, you want to help out this channel, I have also have a Gumroad page where I have videos, I have a sketchbook, I have different eBooks, uh, things that range from gouache to 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 uh, to digital art even. But I haven't done digital art in a while. I've been more focused on traditional, but it's there. It's there. As a matter of fact, uh, most of the things I do, I do from a tablet uh, that I bought a long time ago. Anyway, until next Tuesday, I will be back with another video. And again, if you want to help this channel, uh, you can hit like. You can hit uh, uh, below where I have a, a link to this Gumroad page. Okay, and uh, um, you can uh, purchase videos there. It will definitely go a long way in helping this channel any way that will help it to grow and get it to more people. Thanks a lot. I will see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.